Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Now I've got some new crochet books that I haven't showed you before and one of them I actually bought when I was away. So I'm going to go through some of these books. Now this one, I haven't seen this one before. I mean I'm on Amazon all the time. I go on and I look at what books are coming out. I get quite a few ones that are downloadable and I can put them on my Kindle. But you, when you get books uh, in PDF format, that is where you can look at them on your phone and things, or on a, you don't need to just do it with a Kindle. I mean, you can get lots of apps on your phone that will open up um, these digital format books as well. So this one is called Clever Crochet Squares and it's by Maria... Gulberg. Gulberg. Now, what I wanted to do was I wanted to try mosaic crochet. But I'll need to get someone's at my door. So, we'll look at this one first. Now, what I wanted to do was I wanted to learn how to do mosaic crochet. A friend of mine, and she was sending me pictures of the mosaic blankets that she was doing quite similar to sort of this kind of style like this and it was absolutely beautiful. Now this book is actually a spiral bound book and it's all done in, if I can find some of them, it's all done and charts like this. Now it tells you at the beginning what each symbol means and again use post-it notes because that's what I do with the, that's how I learned how to do a graph. Now it tells you the symbols, so it tells you the symbols, the symbols, I would say a single crochet, well this is in, I didn't actually realise that this is a USA style, so what I would do is you put that little sign and if you're in the USA you can put SC for single crochet. If you're in the UK you can put DC for a double crochet. So this one is a single crochet for joining blocks. The darker one is relief stitch. Now some of the books call relief stitch front post stitches and they'll call it a relief stitch but it's like a front post stitch. It tells you all the stitches, half double crochet. If you're in the UK, that's a half a treble crochet to you. And you can write that on a post-it note, what they actually mean for the country that you're in. I didn't realise that this was in US terms. And it's a lovely book though. It's a lovely book. So it tells you how to do your corners and it's got some lovely pictures. You don't need to do it in these colours. That's the thing about this. It's all in granny squares. Now I'm going to hold this up. So look at that. It's absolutely beautiful. Now you can get lots of free charts like this on Google and on Pinterest as well. So for this... You'll do a magic ring and you do a chain of three. Then you'll do two treble crochets. Then you'll chain three, two, three treble crochets, chain three, three treble crochets, chain three and three treble crochets. And that is how you read these graphs. And you can get lots of these graphs free, like I've said, on Google and Pinterest as well. You can just download them. And this is a really pretty book. Now, you might think it's too advanced, but it's just squares. And then you sew them together. And it tells you when to change your colour. But like I said, you don't need to change the colour of the yarn. It shows you how to do corners. shows you how to do ones that are straight. It really is a good stash buster, this. And that's why I got it. And look at that. And now that is just squares done with black and white yarn with a little bit of red. These ones have got a little bit of blue. You just follow the little graph. This is the one that I was interested in. And I really would like to work out how to do that in a straight line 
as well. So this one is from the 50s. So that's that book and it is all graphs. So this is only good if you know how to how to read these and you should be fine with it. So that's that one. Now the next one is the Modern Guide to Textured Crochet. Now I've got a little feeling that I might have this one. I don't think so. I think this is the one that I was after. And I don't know if it only came out this year. Now it says here it was twelve ninety nine. It wasn't. It was only about seven ninety five or something when I got it. So it's worthwhile going on to Amazon and places like that or bookstores. Um, the works online is really good for doing crochet books at a really cheap price. One. So that is this one. Now I was really interested in this one. I like textured crochet. This one is by Lee Satori. Lee Satori. And it gives you all the instructions. Now there's written instructions and there's graph instructions. And this is really nice. I've done this this before. I've done that pattern from another book as well. So what you will find is a lot of these stitches are in other books as well. And then you've got this little cluster stitch or like a little berry stitch. So you've got a berries, you've got popcorn stitches that are similar to this. You've got bobble stitches and what's the other one? There's another one. There's bobbles, clusters, berries. I don't know what it'll come to me. <laughs> <laughs> it will come to me and all it is is the difference in the amount that you put in when you do it with this one is one two three you're doing three treble crochets pulling them all together and then you single crochet down to the bottom and that's what this means you've got or it's your double trebles that's what these little signs i'll need to do one so that's another little cluster it becomes it's a little bit flatter now that's a nice little one as well. Another little cluster stitch. <clears throat> so you've got popcorn. There you go. That's a popcorn one. It, it just stands out a little bit more. And I have done that. You get bobbles and berries and popcorns. There's your bobble stitch. That's staggered it over. And there we go. All these different little textures. This is a good, oh, do you know, I haven't had any of these hooks. I would really like to get, look at that, I bet that's a lot of money. That little box set there. Now, it doesn't tell you about it. But I like those ones, they look like magic wands. Now, I think they're called, oh, what's it called? Wooden acrylic metal. Some of them have a name, it's like a spindle. Um, streamline swirls, furrow crochet hooks. I like flat crochet hooks, but if you know the name of these, just drop a little line underneath. They look like these. They, they look like um, what you call them? Like they look like bobbins, like long bobbins for when they used to do the old-fashioned lace. Show when you cross them over each other. They look like that. these ones are beautiful. Look at those. I've never tried anything like that. I really would like to. So it tells you about how to block, to keep it square, how to dampen it and pin it all down to keep it square. Now you've got bobbles and berries and popcorn stitches. You've got them straight lines, you've got them staggered. Tells you how to do that. There's puff stitch. That's the other one I was thinking of. Bobbles, popcorn and puff stitches and berry stitch. All very similar. Where your little puff one you go through and just pull the yarn through and then you bring it all together. I've done that as well, that stitch. Now these stitches are in a lot of the other books. She's using one of those sort of hooks that I've got, they're thin, they go fat and then they go thin again. Shell stitch, 
Pico stitch. That's a little pico. That's more like a sort of, I call that a berry stitch. Good for doing edges. Shows you how to do some textured cushions. And then she's going into spring. I take it this one is going to be spring, summer. You've got tulip stitch where it looks like a little tulip. Where I'm going to hold that up. Now you don't need to do that in two different colours. You can just do all that in the one colour. And you get it looks completely different when you do it all in one colour. But that way it shows it up where it looks like little flowers as well. And that's a different one. Is that the same one? No, that's staggered over. It just shows you how different you can do stitches. Now you've got ones that Americans call it embossing and we call it, well, relief embossing sticking out. <laughs> that's what I do. And that's like your front post stitches where you're going behind the stitch and it looks as if it's layered over the front like cable. It's like cable stitching. And again, it's the same kind of little patterns. A bullion stitch. I've never been able to do the bullion stitch. Now, the way you do the bullion stitch is you wrap it around your hook several times. Now, she's using another hook to keep it even and then you pull your yarn through and it all slides down and it ends up looking like a I'm not going to say a maggot but like a cocoon it looks like a cocoon and you know to be honest I was trying it and I kept ripping mine out because mine's didn't look mine's looked like this and maybe that's the way it's made I just didn't think it looked very even but maybe I've actually I did it all right actually by going but because that looks like the sample that I tried to do. I didn't think of using two hooks though. Your hook on the top and using the end of another hook to keep the wrapping the same. Even just doing one line like that in it. You could do your crochet and then do a line and then just do your normal treble crochets and then do another line like that for a little bit of texture. It's open to imagination, a lilac stitch. That's all these little berries. That's pretty. Now it only looks like a lilac because that's what they've done it into. You could do that in a darker one with a light and make it look like a bunch of grapes. But there's all these different textures. And it is beautiful. I've never tried putting the flowers on like that. I always think it's easier to make the flower and then just stitch them on with a couple of stitches. Then you've got cable stitches as well. Now she's got sort of like that little tulip stitch just done in one colour. And it's beautiful. It just shows you what you can do with some very, very simple texture. And just two colours of yarn. I like that. That is so pretty. That is pretty. I love those colours. I like all those toffee and coffee colours. So she's got all these different little ones. That looks like little ice cream. Oh, it's called Ice Cream Cone Stitch. That's in other books that I've had as well. And maybe I've got one of her books already. And I like this. I've done awful before. I've done lots of these. A lot of these stitches are in other books. I like that she's done this. Look, the little bag with all the little ice cream cones on it. That's pretty. And then there's all these autumn ones in autumn colours. The thing is with them as well. Now, she's got acorn stitch and got this in the autumn colours with these sort of chocolate brown and a sort of coffee sort of milky coffee colour but if you change that to pink and lemon or grey and pink or nice mint green and white it'll completely change the look of it and it'll be for another time of the year as well so it's all your imagination as well now they've got the jasmine stitch I've tried it. It takes up a lot of yarn doing the jasmine the, the jasmine stitch like this. And it leaves it looking like all these little flowers in a line. 
It's really pretty. I like this. Now I've done, this one's called the Loose Leaves, but it's also called the Dragon Stitch, the Scale Stitch. Um, what else? Other stitch. There's, there's lots um, for that one. Now this one's done in two different colours, so it actually stands out looking like a leaf. Like a palm leaf, that's a good idea as well. I never thought of doing this stitch in two different colours. Uh, Muttley's eating a carrot there, if you wonder what that chewing noise is. And there's a little graph there how to do it. I've got cable, we've got houndstooth, I like houndstooth, it always comes out pretty. Two different colours, and you can still do the houndstooth in one colour as well. You still get a really nice texture. And you've got this one, it's called the coffee cup stitch. It looks like this is very much like the tornado one that I did. I did one like this and it was like a tornado, it came out looking like a tornado. It looks like a beehive to me rather than a, than a coffee cup. But that's just what happens with it. And then you've got these projects that you can do. There's some rib stitch, spike puff stitch, waffle stitch. That's pretty. That looks like the little, it's called a frosty bubble stitch, but I did something very similar and it was like a cupcake. Mine's came out looking like a cupcake, but I did mine much bigger. I did mine, mine much bigger. It just shows you that I like that. That's a pretty stitch. Every time I've done that, it's always came out quite messy looking. <laughs> but it just shows you some of the stitches you can do and some of them you just might not be so good at. And these are these hooks that I was talking about that look like a spindle. Do you know, it's really nice. I need to get some of those. I haven't got any. They're really pretty hooks as well. And there's a whole bunch of other books that you can get from this search press. So that's that one, Modern Texture by Lee Satori, if I did the name properly. Now we're going to this one. Now this one is an American one. I got this when I was in America. And again, you get a post-it note and you put SC for a single crochet in the UK is a double crochet. And just stick the, the, the two you can put the equivalents on a post-it note. So SC is a double crochet in the UK and you can work it out easy. Now this is beautiful. I have been doing this blanket here. I've got this blanket on the go. I'm going to bring it in. Now it is a little bit larger. And if I can get some of this in. And look at this. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Now it's got texture, it's all texture, it's got like that little berry stitch that is a UK double treble and then you pull it down when you do your next row and it makes it into this bobble. It's got some front post treble crochets, there's a few little fans here as well around there. Now I think that would make a beautiful back of a hat. It would be beautiful. And you're going back to that front post stitch. And it is just different stitches. And it shows you what you can learn. That even if you only know how to do a single crochet and a double crochet. Or in the UK that's a double crochet and a treble crochet. You can mix and match it. And you've got these little ones here. And then you just go into the back of it. And it makes it fold over. It just shows you with simple, simple stitches what you can achieve in crochet. I'll pop that back over there. And that's that one there. Now that's in a solid colour. The only thing I didn't like about this book, because I have been using it. <laughs> and this is what I'm making. I'm making mine a little bit wider. Is that it starts here and then you've got to go over to a different page to get the rest of it and it is in there I think in there that's where the rest of it rather than it all being on one page it's jumping back and forward and but this is a beautiful book you can get this on Amazon as well both in the USA and the UK but just bear in mind it is USA 
crochet terms. But if you get a post-it note and you Google what single crochet is, in the UK is a double crochet, a USA double is our treble, a US treble is a UK double treble. And you'll get on fine. You just take your post-it note off and move it around the pages. And this is beautiful. Look at that. That is so beautiful for making up, using up all your scrap balls of yarn. And you might think, I'm never going to be able to do it. I didn't think I was going to be able to do that. But once you get the gist of it, it's just take each section as a little stitch. So you've got your berry stitch, a fan stitch, front posts, then you've got treble crochets, you work in the back, then you go back to your berry stitch, your fan stitch here, your front post stitches, back to this little berry stitch. If you take it a section at a time, you should manage to do it. Now some of these, look at that, that is called a stained glass window absolutely beautiful beautiful my sister sandra said to me you could make that for me <laughs> oh yeah i'm not that accomplished i don't think but it's the color way that you do it it's the actual yarn that makes it look so stunning especially with those dark colors around it you do there it's a little bit closer up so you can see it's done in rounds, it's done in rounds and it's all well explained. It's called the Cathedral Rose Window, absolutely stunning. Now I really like this one as well, I like that, that is beautiful. And I like that, this is just like your granny stitch. This has got like your granny stitch and then it's got some bobble stitches in. Great for stash busting. Just start with your square and then you can add in all your colours. Add in any stitches that you know. I mean, this is like your bobble stitch. Then it's got treble crochets, it's got half treble crochet rows and you can just work it in your own head as well. So you don't even need to follow patterns. It gives you great ideas on how to do things that you want as well. I love this. I like the idea where it's telling you how a lot of people might have the odd ball of dark brown. You might have that coffee one and grey and you think, what can I do with it? And this gives you great ideas on how to use up all those odd balls that you might have. And it gives you a pattern to follow. And it's a written pattern. It's beautiful look at that beautiful and you've got this one as well it gives you a good explanation on how to do it now I will say it is a little bit for the more accomplished you've got to be able to read the pattern to follow these ones and that is so pretty look at that I really like that one and this is the kind of thing that you can actually do. Don't think you can't do it. I mean, they've got like this little basket weave here on this section. You could just use do a whole blanket with that. I've got one like that in my channel. But I think this is, it's a good book. Especially if you're a, a little bit more advanced than a beginner. It's a great way of showing you how to use colour schemes as well. That's so pretty. That is so pretty. And then again, it's with this, you've just got different sort of stitches in and then it's given it texture by doing maybe like a bobble row, a little fan row and a bobble row and then using different stitches. And it's it's lovely. It's a great idea and it gives you ideas as well that you might not have those colours but you might have um, similar ones or different ones. And you don't need to stick to the colours or the yarn that you, they're using. That is stunning. Absolutely stunning. This is amazing. This would, I would actually try and make that and pin it to my wall for wall art. They're beautiful. Beautiful. I like that as well. 
That's like a V stitch, a V stitch and a cluster stitch, and that that's what it is. And it just so amazing that two little stitches, and you can get something as beautiful as that. It does tell you what the stitch guide is and what it means. So you can find the equivalent in the UK for that and write it down in a post-it note. So you can still use books from America with different terms. It even tells you how to do the stitches in it. How to wrap it around your yarn. Now, I like that one. That one's the one I've been using. Now, this is the work that I want to try out. I want to try doing mosaic crochet. Now, my friend Liz says that you can do it where you're leaving your ends and you just crochet in your ends as you're working your next colour. And there's, she said there's lots on YouTube. This is by Esme Crick, this one. And this one is, this is just a, a whole mixture. It's not by a certain person. Oh, it is. It's got Anna... Mora Sores. I don't know if I've pronounced the name of that one properly or not. But look at those. These are just done in squares and that's what I'm going to start off doing. I'm going to start off doing a square first and see how I get on with it. Because I really want to try this. Now there are other books that you can get from this publisher. Look at these. Beautiful. Beautiful. I've already got that one, that 3D granny one. And I'm not into crocheting those tiny little dolly things. And this is a really good book. Gives you all the instructions on the stitches and the techniques. Even shows you how to do it. So that you can use it as a cover for the back of your your sofa or for a bag. And look at that, it's beautiful. The word yes. And it shows you how to do them as wall hangs. Which I like. Little houses. I've got the little pattern in there, how to do it. Each box is a stitch and it tells you use your base colour. And then your other colours. And I don't know if they're weaving it in as they go along. I'll need to read it and check. But I thought I would just... See, there's tiny little projects to try. I mean, even though that's Christmas eh, it's quite a large one. You can actually change that and just do it. Maybe you could do it in black and white. You could do it in different colours. So it doesn't look so Christmassy. You can even turn your graph upside down and have one going there and one going in between it as well. So there's lots of ideas. That's what it looks like with different colours where it's not looking Christmassy, if you know what I mean. Look at that. It's really, really pretty. And that's what I was looking for, something that was kind of like that. So that I could make myself... Look at that. It's so pretty. Look at it done just elongated a little bit that is amazing that is so so nice I really like that one but that's it in different colours it tells you how you can do it in different colours you don't have to do the black and the white or the grey you can do it just with two different colours as well and it's done in rows, tells you how to do it in rows, and there is a graph as well, so you can do it either or, you can do it either or, or do it together. There's lots of pictures on it as well, and sometimes when you see what the pattern's like, it's a lot easier as well when you see what it's supposed to look like. Got a little footstool there made. You can do that as a cushion as well, you don't need to do it as a footstool. Look at that, it's pretty. And then again, it shows you it done in different colours. Now, this is what I want to try. I might video myself doing this and doing all the mistakes. <laughs> but there's very simple things to start with. Start with a band or even just a set of them and then see how you get on. And I think this one is just, you leave, you, you bring your other colour along with you. 
with this I think I'm not so sure but I haven't read this one I just looked through it and thought oh I want to I want to have this one but um, I didn't look through it was on Amazon and you do get to see some of the pages now this is really pretty two colours look at that and that's it when you mix it with other colours so absolutely amazing I think I might start with that one it looks as if it's maybe a little easier for me to begin with a nice big chart there to follow and you've got written instructions on each row so I think I might start with that it's so pretty I love the colours of it and then you go on to doing these so pretty it looks like very Moroccan that is beautiful and it's just two colours of yarn two colours of yarn absolutely beautiful and you can do it in sections you don't even need to do it all like that that's your pattern section and then what you can do is you can do another section and do that in different colours as well see like that where you do half of it one colour and half of it another colour that'll help to use up all your yarn that's beautiful can't believe that that one pattern is so different so pretty I might start with that one <laughs> make my mind up it's either going to be that one or that other sort of orangier one so pretty so so pretty this is a beautiful book and then you've got this one and again you don't need to do it with lots of different colours you can just do it with two you could do that just black and white any colour you want and you just follow along look at that that's pretty and that's it done in that colour look at that look how stunning that is absolutely beautiful and then the last one I've got is very similar to this one and this is by the same person, Anna Moras Sores, Suarez, Soares. Well, I don't know how to say that. I'm, I'm not frightened to admit that I don't know how to pronounce the lady's name. But I think there's going to be patterns in here that may be in there already. The lady there. She's Portuguese. Lovely lovely and you've got all your little squares oh wow this looks complicated and look at that it's a little graph tells you how to do it so simple treble crochets clusters chains single crochets treble crochets see it just works its way around and look at these these look complicated but they can they can be easy they can be easy it tells you what it means and you just take it stage by stage there it's all sort of focused in a bit more and I think she gives you it in round by round as well beautiful beautiful she tells you how to do the corners great detail absolutely brilliant detail as well and she's got it in stages each round what it should look like brilliant idea absolutely fantastic that is beautiful stunning and all that section is that blanket which is brilliant there's lots of pages in here and you've got this little log cabin one very log cabin style and it's done in squares and then she's joined it together get rid of all your scrap yarns she's done it like that so simple so simple so there is ones here that beginners can do because that's just a UK single crochet and she's done it like that log cabin style she shows you how to do these if you want to follow her chart or you can make these charts up yourself and put your own colours in them and then follow her instructions so easy oh that is beautiful so this is not just for the accomplished and the same with this one look at this one this is called ocean blue 
That is beautiful. And it's worked that way along. Shh. Definitely barking at someone crunching through the ice outside. Uh, and then you've got this. Beautiful, beautiful. It's got some front posts. A little bit of cable in there. Shh. It's been snowing outside and it's really icy and Motley doesn't like the noise of all that crushed ice when the cars go over it. Look at this, just for doing a plain panel and then doing some different stitches all around the edge. She's got it all explained. Beautiful, beautiful. What's this one? Oh, that's pretty. That's all little open squares. See, you could do that. You could do that. Even if you're a beginner, you could do that. Just follow along. And this is the ones that I've been wanting to learn how to do. These ones. Now, I think this one's done in a long line, maybe. And then it's just turned on its side. She tells you how to do it and then how to do the edge. So you can even just do that and not do the edge. You don't need to do all the corner. You could just do that centre section. She ex oh, well, there we go, Alison. She's explained it perfectly how to do this. It's done with chains and you work in your next colour. Like this. You can see that. I'll fix my focus. There we go. So you do one in that colour and then you go over the top in that one. And then you do your next one over the top of that. And then your next colour over the top of that. Oh, I'm going to try this one first. And see how I get on with that. That might be easier to do. So when you're doing one block, you're just going over the top of it and through the chain sections where you've done your chains. I'll need to show you that's pretty, pretty, pretty. She shows you how to do these in stages. That's a fantastic idea. That one's all different colours. Use up all your different colours. It's got different bobble stitch popcorn she's got front post ones you wouldn't think that just a few simple stitches could make that and you can choose your own colours she does tell you what yarn she's used and then you've got ones where it's this and then you've got a half a one and she shows you how to join the halves upside to make this beautiful so descriptive beginning so easy and the same with this one look well, that's the one that's on the front cover that I like she just shows you how to do it wow look at that beautiful just change the colour she just put a darker in and she's kept a base colour Absolutely brilliant. Oh, look at that. That is beautiful. That's a great big square. Beautiful. That would be beautiful in all the yarns that you've got that do that variegated colour. I think that's what it is that she's used. Uh, Sheepsy's Whirl Ombre Collection and Sheepsy's Whirlette she tells you when to change your colours. Beautiful. Do have a look for some of that yarn. And a few more easy squares to start with. Beautiful books. I'm going to enjoy sitting reading that with a cup of coffee. So we've had a little run through of the books that I've got. Now before I finish my doorbell went and now this video has been pre-recorded it's been pre-recorded since before Christmas and I ordered this 
and wait till you see whose book this is. I saw this and I'd, I had heard that this lady had did this book and I just thought, oh, I've got to get that and try it now. These books were all on Amazon. Like I've said, I'll put a link underneath the video for them. You can always get them, have a look at them. And if you don't like them, you can always send it back because it's Amazon. And if you get stuck in the house sometimes like I do, if you need to return anything to Amazon, when you start the return process and it asks, do you want to print a label to take this to a post office or a drop-off point, if you click more selections just under that part, there's one that will say more options. And if you click on it, you can choose an option for the postal it used to be every, but it's not now. I did notice because I sent something back yesterday that it's the postal service. You can click on it and print the label off and they'll come to your door and pick it up. So there is that option if you're housebound or if you can't get out that they will come, Amazon will come and pick these parcels up from your house. You go into the return process and you pick more options. You don't need to pick the one that says you'll drop it off at the post office or a drop off point. If you've got a printer in the house, you can click on the one where you can get it picked up from your house as well. Now look whose book I got. Bella Coco. I got Bella Coco. Now, her name is Sarah Jane Fregola. I think I've pronounced her name properly. I'm not sure. I've just always called her Bella Coco. Now, Bella Coco has been on YouTube for a long time. She has a crochet channel. She used to do beauty as well. And she's just got into so many other things. And now she's done a book. Now, I think... It does say it's a clear and simple course for beginners, but I got this for someone who is a beginner to crochet. And this is, I've got this to send to someone. And because I'm recording this before Christmas, I'm not saying who it is. But anyway, uh, this is the first that I've seen this book. It's nice, pretty colours. It's quite pastel colours as well. And I'm going to flick through it. Now, as far as when I was reading it and going to order it, it's not just beginner crochet that's in this. There is other stuff in it. She's got hats, mittens, tells you how to decrease. She's got granny square baby blankets, a granny hexy pillow. Bun I actually thought there would have been a little bit more in it. There doesn't seem to be that many actual projects. She's got face scrubbies, granny square blanket, a pillow, bunting, a basket, hat and mittens, how to decrease, and a pencil case. I suppose you could use that as a crochet one if you put something plastic inside to hold your hooks in from not falling through the spaces in your stitches. But oh, I'm beginning to think it's a very, very beginner blanket. It would have been great if she'd actually put some... Is a, I wonder if she's going to bring another one out then, if this one is called A Simple Course for the Beginner. I would have hoped that she might have put some intermediate stuff in as well. Or at least some just past a beginner stage. She does explain about labels on your yarn. She explains about different yarn types as well. The way you get your yarn. Scissors, stitch markers. These are the boards for pinning out your granny squares. You can get these and you put your granny square in and you use these pegs and push them through the holes and it keeps it square. I would have hoped she would have had more than two on that. Pins and clips. And it, it keeps, it pushes your granny square into a proper square. She's got a little colour inspiration. That's a good idea. You could actually do that yourself and put it on pegs and put them together. Where you think that some of the colours that will match. 
a lot of people, even myself sometimes, it's like, what colour would go with that one? You can download download for free colour wheels, and it's got an arrow to that sort of purpley there, and the complementary colour is that orange, and I think that's what you do with it. She tells you how to make a slip knot, tells you how to hold the hook. Now, if I ever did a book, I wouldn't tell anyone how to hold the hook. I would just tell you, hold the hook the way it's comfortable. Hold it the way it's comfortable for you in your hand. And you'll soon get the hang of doing crochet. Don't try and hold the hook in a way that's just not going to suit your hand. See, for me, the way I crochet, I crochet like this. I wouldn't hold my hook like that because I wouldn't feel it comfortable. So I more or less hold it sort of that way. It's just sort of, and I don't hold the yarn like that either. I just do it the way it's comfortable. Do it the way it's comfortable. But that's good for beginners that doesn't have anyone to give them a hand. Now she is kind of promoting their own hooks because <laughs> she's, uh, she's apparently she has got a range of crochet hooks out as well. She's got, tells you how to do basic stitches, how to do your tension, if your square turns out bigger use a smaller hook, if your square turns out smaller use a larger hook, that's how you work your tension. If your tension's too slack or too tight, she tells you how to do sewing up your stitches. So it is a good book for very basic beginners. And she's got these, oh there's an infinity scarf there. Tells you how to read a pattern. And then she's got her little pictures here. I like the way it's all very pastel. It's not in your face, bright, bright colours. And it's not like a few books that I've got before on Amazon that turn out to be black and white. And you can't quite see the pattern very well. Techniques, how to sew seams. It's a very basic, basic crochet book. It's not over the top for beginners. There's plenty of pictures. And I guess you can always go on her YouTube channel as well. She does have a YouTube channel and it's just Bella Coco's Crochet. And she's got how to read a crochet chart. I like crochet charts. I find them easier than trying to read written patterns. Once you know what the symbols are, three treble crochets in, chain three, you've got your three treble crochets and that's what that means, it's a treble. Very easy, you chain three, three trebles, chain three, row two, you'll do your chain and into this chain you'll do three, chain three, do three, there she's got her chain one, well that's the corners for three and I like how to, I like charts, I think with charts you either, your brain either likes them or it doesn't, a lot of people don't like doing work from charts. But once you get the hang of what the person's little symbols are, it's quite easy. It's a very, very much a beginner. There's a little simple blanket there. Granny Square Baby Blanket. That's pretty. It's quite pretty, isn't it? made up of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven granny squares along and you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine up. And she shows you how to do that step by step. Shows you how to make a pom pom, a little pillow, shows you how to make a tassel, some bunting, bunting. A little basket and a hat and a pair of gloves with a little bit of a stitch that's maybe just a little bit slightly above beginner but still able to be done by a beginner. 
but for everybody else who can already crochet, there's nothing much in here at all, really. A good book for beginners, if you're a complete beginner, but there's not much else in it for anyone else other than an, a complete beginner. Nothing in here that's not already on our channel for free, I guess. But you can always get it and look at it, and if you don't like it, you can always return it. It's the thing about internet shopping. Because you've not actually physically got it in your hand, you can return it. There's not too many patterns in it really either. Little scarf there. A little pattern for each of the things that she's done. Placemats, cup coasters, very basic. Mm, very basic. It would have been nice if she had some more in there for the more accomplished. It's a lovely book though. I like all the colours in it. It's going to be fantastic for a beginner. And at... $14.99 What you can if you get the PDF version it will be cheaper. Hmm I don't sound too impressed by it, do I? I did do one, I did get one, it was a crochet crowd. I don't I think I've left that at my sister's. I'm not sure. And uh, that was full of beautiful, beautiful patterns for all stages for all I think the idea of her doing for the simple course for beginners is maybe she's going to bring another one out maybe she's going to bring another one out for once you get past the beginner stage and there'll be more in it but these are the books that I've been getting I love these and I really do like this I'm going to try and give this a try Still to read through a little bit more. It might be I get fed up quite easy. <laughs> I get fed up with things quite easy. If I've got a project that's going to take far too long. See, I'm gonna give it a try. Some of this one. I really do like some of the patterns that are on it. But we'll see. We'll see. Oh, look at that, that's nice. It looks like weaving as well. Two strands of yarn for that one. But anyway, we're going to try and give expand a little with doing geometric patterns and some some mosaic crochet. So thank you very much for watching. Please, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. It's completely free to subscribe to the channel. And if you click on the bell icon, YouTube will tell you when I put up another tutorial. So I'm having another little look through these, especially hopefully once this flu that I seem to be catching is maybe hopefully it'll be lifted by then. So until the next time, happy crafting and I'll see you all again soon. Goodbye.